What you're about to see is something that so few people alive have seen and heard, but that every single person should. Last year, I had the opportunity to go to Hiroshima, Japan for work. And while I was there, I had the incredible honor and privilege of being able to meet with a survivor of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. Her name is Toshiko Tanaka, and she was just six years old when the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. Now, my native language is Japanese. Hers, of course, is as well. So we got the opportunity to converse just the two of us for over an hour. And the discussion that we had is something that will never, ever leave me. I think about it every day. But she also worked really hard with help to write her experience out in English and practiced delivering it so that you would be able to hear her experience as well. And she let me record that so that I would be able to share it with you. So here is Toshiko sharing her story. Hello, my name is Toshiko Tanaka. I survived the atomic bombing in Hiroshima. I've been creating enamel mural artwork for over 50 years. It wasn't easy for me to talk about what had happened in Hiroshima on August 6th, 1945. I thought people would not understand me. I was traumatized and not able to talk to anybody about my personal experience of the atomic bombing, not even to my own family. I started to open up and share this horrible experience when I turned 70. I went, I went to Venezuela on peace boat 15 years ago and met Mr. Toledo, the mayor of the city of La Guayla. He said to me, as a survivor of the atomic bombing, you have a responsibility to talk about what happened that really touched my heart. Originally, my family lived only 500 meters from ground zero, where the bomb hit. But just one week before the atomic bombing, we moved 2.3 kilometers away from ground zero. Because of this, I am alive today. Even though I was burned and exposed to radiation, when I was when I was just six years old, the gigantic, gigantic mushroom cloud was right above me. At 8.15 a.m., I was on my way to school. Somebody shouted, B-29, the enemy bomber. I looked up and saw a tremendous flash. It was like a million lights. Everything went white. I couldn't see. I covered my face with my right arm. Heat burned my head my neck, and my right arm. Then, suddenly, everything went dark, like night time. Hot sand dust blew up. It covered the sun. I couldn't see. My mouth was full of dust. What was happening? What should I do? I can't forget that terrible crunchy sand taste. Soon my burned arm began to swell. The pain was incredible. I cried all the way home, but our house was very damaged. When I got there, even though my mother was alive, she could not recognize me. My hair was burned. I was covered in ash. My clothes were destroyed. That night, I was close to death. Survival depended on how strong you were and how lucky. My younger, my younger sister had bad head wounds. Our roof was mostly gone. But suddenly, I looked up and saw a small patch of blue sky. Although I was in pain, I thought, this is so beautiful. That blue sky stayed with me. It had given me the will to live. And if the heavens said, don't worry, there will be a tomorrow. This is why I continue to live life positively, even through many hardships. It took only one second for a single bomb to destroy the city of Hiroshima and 140,000 lives. All my former classmates were killed. 
my young aunt left home that morning and never came back. Her body was never found. Every image of that terrible day remains. My generation will be the last to tell you about this event as direct witnesses. This is what I saw. After I got home that day, I saw a large crowd of dying people. They were walking in procession near my house. Some were orphans. Men, women, and children alike were almost naked with burned clothes. They walked in silence with outstretched arms. Burned pearl skin hung from the tips of their fingers. They were like ghosts. Even today, whenever I see barbecue, barbecued tomatoes, it reminds me of that terrible scene of death. Like tomatoes, human skin peels off easily when burned. Later, something weird started to happen. Like tomatoes, human skin peels off easily when burned. Later, something weird started to happen. People with no injuries started to die right in front of our house. No one knew them, but they had been exposed to massive radiation. I have another strong memory of that time. I was unconscious for a few days. When I woke up, there was a strong smell in the air. It was like burning rotten fish. Even now, I can still smell it. But the smell wasn't in fish. It was the smell of human bodies being cremated in city parks and school grounds. Even though our family had nothing, my mother sheltered many people in our house. One was her cousin, Kenzo Matsuki. He came to our house with a burnt bucket containing the skull of a woman he wished to bury. The skull belonged to his aunt. His aunt was burned alive in her own house. I also remember a 15 year old girl who came to our house. On her back, she carried her badly burned younger sister. The burned girl survived, but the older girl did not. She had been exposed to massive radiation. My husband's uncle was an English teacher and a devout Christian. He used to paint beautiful big pictures and believed in peace. But the bomb killed him and all his six family members, including his baby. Believing their loss, my husband adopted his uncle's family name, Tanaka. My husband has now died, but I still carry this last name. In those days, the city of Hiroshima and the surface of the rivers, which ran through the city, were entirely covered by people's bodies. There were also 12 young American prisoners of war in Hiroshima. They also died from the bomb, dropped by their own country. Later, after finding this out, I started to feel urgency to research about what happened after the bomb. As time passed, the wounds on my skin became less visible. But the emotional wounds and the da damage from the radioactivity remained. Do you know the famous story of Sadako and her paper cranes? Sadako was four years younger than me, and we went to the same school. She survived the atomic bomb when she was two years old, but died of leukemia at the age, 12, age of 12. There were many other children like Sadako. In my case, radiation symptoms started when I was 12. My white blood cell count was abnormal. I suffered constant fever and fatigue, and sometimes fainted. I always had mouth ulcers and blotches around my mouth. 
this was hard to eat. Even today, when I am very tired, I have painful sores and can't sleep. I sometimes bleed from my colon. I have had bone fracture three weeks, uh, knee surgery and cataract surgery. In those days, Hibakusha women had trouble marrying because their babies often had birth defects. Fortunately, I was able to marry and had a happy family life. My husband did not seem to mind that I was a Hibakusha. But when our first child was born, he was scared. He seriously checked the baby's fingers and the toes. Then I realized that he had been worried about the damage, damage the bomb on, uh, on a baby. Not just my husband, but all parents those days were worried. Nobody on this planet should suffer this same tragedy. Since 2007, I have made four round the world voyages on peace boat, which is sponsored by a Japan-based international NGO. I learned more about the situation of the world during these voyages. I have visited more than 80 countries, including ones that are suffering tragic war wars, and ones that suffer damage from climate change. I learned that nuclear weapons will lead the Earth to destruction. They are inhumane and should never be allowed on Earth. Last year, 2022, Russian President Putin invaded Ukraine, killing many civilians and causing disastrous da damage to the land. He also suggested the use of nuclear weapons for a survivor who knows the inhumane tragedy caused by those weapons. This is totally unacceptable and I feel strong anger. The global community must cooperate to stop this outrage. Otherwise, it could lead to the end of the Earth. There are many people working tirelessly for a nuclear-free world like you. For, a instance, for instance, I can is a global campaign to promote the abolishment of nuclear weapons. As you know, because of ICANN's contribution, TPNW Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons was adopted on July 7, 2017, and it was awarded 2017 Nobel Peace Prize. However, none of nuclear states and their allies, including Japan, had supported the treaty. I urge the leaders of the nuclear weapon states and other nations not to dismiss the TPNW as idealistic, but to listen to the voice of people and think about it again. I hope they think about create, creating peace, not going to war. We are the crew members of a ship called planet Earth. If the crew members fight each other for better food and place, the ship will sink and none of us will survive. Now is the time for us to help each other and create peace through diplomacy. Last month, I was invited to the US with my daughter to give, the, uh, gi to give testimony at seven venues, including Yale University, the University of Connecticut, and Wesleyan University. I was impressed by the reaction from the audience, who gave, a, gave us a standing ovation and a lot of questions and comments. I feel that 
young people in the United States are coming more and more aware of the dangers of nuclear weapons in the current situation. I look forward that to, to their future actions. I know one day we will live in a nuclear-free world and the beautiful blue sky will continue to shine above the heads of our future generation. Thank you for your kind attention.